This video is about sprint mechanics. Whenever someone learns a new movement, I believe you gotta break it down into chunks and learn one piece at a time, one chunk at a time. And so whenever I'm talking about sprint form or teaching someone sprint form, I like to teach it one chunk at a time, one piece at a time. And so here I have this video of a Sapa Pow. And the first piece I want to talk to you about is upper body mechanics. So sprint upper body mechanics. Notice how his arms are here locked at 90 degrees. Uh, he's going to lock these wrists. He's going to lock this arm at 90 degrees and lock these wrists. And notice that his hands are not going to come across his body. They're going to stay here right in front of his shoulders. His chest and face is relaxed. So he gets up into his full running form and here I want you to take a picture of his face if someone was just to look just at this face part you would not know you wouldn't be able to realize that this guy is running at 28 miles per hour because his face is nice and relaxed his chest is relaxed his shoulders are relaxed so good upper, upper body mechanics is a relaxed face relaxed chest arms finishing right in front of the shoulders Continue to look at upper body mechanics. I have a video here of Carl Lewis. I want you to notice his arm action. Alright, so his arm his arms here are at 90, wrists are locked, he's not doggy paddling with his hands. The angle that you want is you want your your back arm is going to be almost parallel with the with the ground. And your hand, a lot of people ask, how high should I bring my hand? Your hand should come up just barely in front of your mouth there. Now notice, now notice his knee drive here. So the first, the first portion is upper body mechanics. Relaxed face, relaxed chest, arms at 90 degrees. Your arms going to come back parallel with the ground. Hand is just right in front of the face. Now look at the lower body mechanics. Notice that his leg is parallel with the ground, and his knee is here at a 90 degree position. His toe is up. Notice that his toe is not facing. His toe is not facing down. His toe is flat. His foot is flat here, and when he strikes the ground, he's going to strike with the ball of his foot. He's not going to land on his toes. His heel will never touch the ground. He's going to land on the ball of his foot. By having your toe up, you're pre-stretching this calf muscle. It's like a rubber band. When that calf, when that foot hits the ground, that calf muscle, as if it was a rubber band, is going to contract and is and is going to propel you down the down the track. And here we have Jarvid Best at the NFL Combine. He's got a pretty good sprint form here. He ran a 4.35, which I believe was the fastest time, if not for the whole Combine, at least the fastest time for his position. Notice his knees are up here at 90 degrees. Something else I want you to notice is that his feet are coming straight down. He's not swinging his leg out. His uh, heel is not going to come out in front of his knee. His feet are going to stay underneath his knees. He's not, he's not coming here and, and getting, getting his foot out this wide and then striking it out in front and then trying to pull himself by. That's oftentimes causes hamstring injuries and it's just not as fast. He's got his knee up and he's bringing his foot straight back down. Straight back down. Notice that his toes are up as well and he's laying on the balls of his feet. All 
All right, so again, we've talked about chest relax, face relax, arms locked at 90, knees up parallel, foot is coming straight back down, land on the balls of your feet. Now the next step, the fourth step, is your backside mechanics. No, notice that uh, most, of, most of his running takes place in front. He doesn't have a long leg swing coming from behind. Now I want I want you to watch this heel. He's going to take this heel and he's going to bring it right back to his butt. So its knee is going to strike the ground, and then that and that heel comes right back to to his butt, and the heel is going to come real close to his butt, and that shortens that lever and helps propel him down the track. Now notice how this looks. He's got his heel is coming real close to his butt. Now notice his knee is up. Once his heel gets to the, his butt, his knee is all the way facing back forward. I think a lot of times athletes train this motion a lot. You know, if that was your leg and here's the foot here, they train bringing their heel to their butt with their knee facing down. You know, examples of this would be doing doing butt kicks, running and doing 10 yards worth of butt kicks. Well, in actual running, you don't want your knee to face the to be pointed straight down while you'll hear it while your heel is touching your butt. Instead, you want it to be more like Jarvid Best here has it with his knee facing forward while his heel is coming to his butt. His butt's here, here's his heel coming up to his butt and facing forward. Watch it one more time, breaking it down. Here's half speed. High knees, quick, fast recovery. And here it is at full speed.